Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I'm going to work on a little bit of uh, craftsmanship and relax and talk to you guys a little bit about the Olympic Games, some unsportsmanlike behavior, and people not understanding the purpose at all of the Olympics. Now, even I've been harsh sometimes in what I say about the Olympics, and some of this I'm going to bash the Olympic Committee in a minute. But uh, my issues with the Olympics have nothing to do with the athletes or disrespecting the sport or the spirit of the games. They have to do with um, trying to put ridiculous rules in place that don't really help sports in any way and that uh, are unfair uh, to many of the athletes in many ways. So that's usually my problem with the Olympics and why I rarely support it anymore and said in the past it's a dog and pony show now. but. At the end of the day, you do have to remember this is a very difficult endeavor to be at. Anyone who makes it to the Olympics has earned their uh, right to be there as an athlete. They are the best in the world. Even the last place person on the field in the Olympics is among the best in the world. You don't get there without being elite. You're elite simply by earning your way there. That's all it takes. And people need some perspective there. And it's intended to be um, interpreted that way. There's supposed to be a spirit of understanding and camaraderie there like there are in uh, most serious sports. That uh, you understand that even your competition, that you respect them. And people who can't do that don't have the right to be there. Now, one of the things that came up, I saw an article, I'm going to mention this first, because this really highlights uh, how some people disrespect that, writers and other people, they don't seem to grasp that they need to set their personal prejudices aside and realize that, again, everyone who's made it to the Olympics and places it all is elite. They are elite in their sport, and they're in the best of the world. But a writer... Uh, wrote this kind of bad piece about a CrossFitter because this woman, uh, I think her name is, name is Tia Toomey, if I'm not saying that correctly. Someone else will correct me if I'm wrong on that one, I'm sure. She took second place. She was a runner-up at the CrossFit Games, so second fittest woman in the world according to CrossFit, which, you know, that doesn't mean that she is by any means, of course. But uh, runner-up. Well, she went to the Olympics and Olympic lifting, and she took 14th place or she's ranked 14th, and this writer, because he doesn't like CrossFit, slammed her for it. It is an insult, and that is really someone who doesn't understand sportsmanship. They don't understand the Olympics. They don't understand, uh, again, anything about sportsmanship. That is not something that you as a fan of a sport or a believer in sportsmanship or an understanding of how elite you have to be to be at the Olympics in place. Uh, and they shouldn't be writing articles about sports in general if, if they're going to take that stance. That is just uh, ridiculous that he would berate her for that because what it comes down to when you are among the best in the world to take 14th place in the Olympics, the Olympic Games, in a sport like weightlifting of all things, that is one of the most competitive sports. Uh, the competition is absolutely fierce. And it's, it is extremely difficult to even get invited to the Olympic Games and, and uh, weightlifting. Uh, it is, you have to be well into the top 1% to even get invited. All right? You have to be elite to even be invited. And to take 14th place is actually a place of honor. Uh, it brings honor to your country. It brings honor to your sport to even be able to take 14th place in such a competitive sport like uh, weightlifting. So for him to mock that as, as a way to belittle the way that she trains because he doesn't like CrossFit uh, is absurd. There are other ways you can bash on CrossFit without belittling an Olympic athlete who has taken a, a respectable placing in the Olympics. I mean... Uh, the audacity of it is, again, this is someone who shouldn't be writing about sports in general because they don't understand sportsmanship and they don't seem to understand that this woman is among the elite. Took 14th at the Olympics. There's no shame in that. 
Now, the other thing I saw, which again, uh, I don't know why they haven't banned the Lebanese team for this, but uh, all right, guys, if anyone has forgotten history when it comes to the Israelis, the Israelis are hated by a few countries around the world, um, very hated. There are people who are insanely prejudiced against them, and I know some people are going to say, well, the Israelis are prejudiced too. No, they're not. That's uh, bullshit extremist lies. The Israelis are one of the most tolerant people on the planet. If you go, go visit their country and see the diversity there in terms of ethnicity, religion, everything else that is allowed and what is even allowed to hold positions of power, they are just as tolerant as the United States or any first world country. Uh, they're more tolerant than many first world countries actually. Uh, way more tolerant than Japan. Who is also a first world high technology country like Israel. The Japanese, that is actually a very prejudiced country in terms of their laws and rules. Uh, Israel is not. So, I mean, people have these ideas as propaganda has been spread. Uh, who have clearly never been there. They've never visited the country. Now, that being said, we know there has been history in the past of the Israeli teams being murdered by extremists at the games. It's happened before. So that being said, why the organizers thought it would be a good idea to put them on the bus, the same bus, to the opening games with the Lebanese team, is irresponsible and whoever made that decision should absolutely be fired and there should probably be an apology for it because they're responsible for that because I guess basically the Lebanese aren't capable of restraining themselves like normal human beings and setting their prejudices aside long enough for the Olympic Games to finish. So that team is not going to get much respect from me for that because their prejudices could be set aside for everyone to compete and finish the Olympic Games long enough to do that. But they couldn't. And so again, we see some unsportsmanlike behavior to where they pretty much were picking a fight and refusing to allow the Israelis to get on the bus for the opening games because they put both teams on the same bus. And uh, obviously the committee had to get involved um, and step in and put the Israelis on a different bus. But given the history there, the, the stupidity of putting the Israelis on any bus from any uh, Islamic country is extremely stupid, particularly any country that they in the last couple generations have had uh, conflicts with. So I don't know what they were thinking, but number two, uh, the Lebanese... I mean, had no right to behave that way at the Olympics either. That's not sportsmanship. And I think that everyone who was on that team who was part of that should probably be banned. Uh, they probably shouldn't be allowed to participate because they can't follow basic sportsmanship. At least the Israelis, when they were confronted that way, they didn't fight. They, they backed off and basically it said because we didn't want to get in trouble. We didn't want to break the rules. Uh, so they backed off and let the uh, committee sort it out. Had they gotten in a fight over it, they could have risked, obviously, the same thing. Poor sportsmanlike behavior. But yeah, the Lebanese team should absolutely be banned for that. Uh, but their team, or at least the members they know were part of it, uh, because that's just unacceptable. It's something like the Olympics. And uh, again, it comes to the point of the committees know what prejudices exist out there, and you don't put people different groups uh, who they know there's going to be a risk of conflict like that on the same bus because some people are apparently incapable of setting aside their hatred and prejudices long enough for the Olympic Games. That would be like you wouldn't take a bus and organize to where you put a bunch of KKK members on the same bus with black people. Okay, You wouldn't do that. That would be stupid and if something happened you would be at fault for it. I'm not saying the people who hurt each other on that bus wouldn't also be at fault because they would be, but you would know something like that could happen. So again, I don't know what they were thinking, but definitely the Lebanese um, team should definitely have some 
sanctions imposed against it for this. I think that would be reasonable uh, for just poor sportsmanship. And that's the difference is that anyone who's participated in a real sport who has seen true sportsmanship knows the difference. And I mean, I'll give you guys an example while we're talking about it. Even to me in powerlifting, the last powerlifting meet I did uh, was the British Grand Prix. And yeah, I fought my way there. I mean, I had spent a year in bed. I'd been told by my doctors I would probably never lift again. And I'd been advised not to lift again and hadn't lifted in years. And I rebuilt myself and earned my way to that competition. And it was a true fight. You know, I, I told you guys in the video before that I was going to take fifth place. That was what I was shooting for. But I got there and realized I had a shot to do better. And when I got to the deadlifts, it was neck and neck. I was tied with another lifter by the name of Rob McGuire for third place to get the bronze medal. And we fought all the way to the end. On his third lift, he passed my second deadlift by five pounds. So I had to reel my third attempt back in just to make sure that I beat him to get my medal. Because I wanted that medal badly and I knew that even if I made what I was going to attempt uh, with a torn hand that was bleeding already and getting slippery, I knew that if I made it I was still not going to get the silver. There was too big of a gap. So no way I was getting the silver and if I missed my third lift then um, that was it. I was going home empty-handed in fourth place, no medal. So I reeled it in and I beat him by five pounds. And he was hoping, he and his coach were watching, they were watching, fingers crossed, they, he wanted that medal bad. I mean, he pulled a lifetime best deadlift to beat me by five pounds. That was the best he had ever hit at a meet, best he had ever hit in training. And then he injured himself at his next meet. So I don't know that he is ever going to surpass that number again, but he gave everything that he had to beat me by five pounds. And I had to reel it in to make sure that I beat him. And I won by five pounds against someone who had just done the best that they had ever done, their lifetime best deadlift um, that he had been training for for years, had a fantastic coach with him named Tom Sparks. And you know what they did? When I beat him by five pounds, they ran over and hugged me. Guy had just done the best he had ever done in his life. And then lost a medal to me by five pounds. It was two and a half kilos, guys. That's five pounds. So what does he do? They run over and hug me. Rob McGuire and his coach, Tom Sparks, those guys are true sportsmen. That is sportsmanship. That is bringing honor and integrity to your sport. That's the sort of behavior that we need to expect out of Olympic athletes and anyone who is involved in discussing the Olympics and the sports. Sportsmanship, people. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.